Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 62, where I receive your emails sent to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Ask me any Flat Earth questions, I will see what I can do. Let's get right to it because there's a bunch of them. I'm never going to get through them all, but hey, we try. First one's called Flat Earth Clues Part 7. Hi, Mark. I'm really interested in learning as much as I can about Flat Earth, and my son, a fan of your work, introduced me to your videos. I have a question that arose when watching your Flat Earth Clues Part 7 video this morning. I'm wondering if you have time to answer it. I noticed in the video that there wasn't any mention about the rotation of the Earth, the trade winds, or any wind currents when addressing flight durations, etc. How do they factor in one way or the other, especially if the Earth isn't spinning? How does that play into your Cape Town, Africa to Auckland, New Zealand scenario? I hope my question even makes sense. P.S. I am definitely positively 100% sure that we've been lied to about many things, if not everything, and I want to be free of the lies. Thanks for all the work that you do, and I look forward to your response and other videos. Best regards, Jeanette Broderick out of Pensacola, Florida. And yeah, look, when I made the clues, when I made clue seven, you got to remember, I was only l literally a week into deciding that I was a flat earther. So I couldn't cover everything like the trade winds or the rotation of the earth. I didn't even cover the curvature of the earth in the flat earth clues. If you guys don't, don't remember literally that eight inches per mile square thing that didn't even come across my desk for uh, like a couple months afterwards. Uh, and since she said, look forward to your other videos, you probably only watched the, the main clue. So I will send her a link to my channel. So that goes into the to do pile. I get a lot of those. This one's called weird jet speeds. Hi, Mark thought you might find this of interest. These appear to be numerous. I'm sorry. There appear to be numerous occurrences of passenger jets suddenly tapping into faster jet streams and bumping their speed up 200 miles an hour faster than normal on transatlantic flights. Hmm. And there is an, actually an article on Wired.com called Norwegian Air Transatlantic Speed Record. Huh. I'm going to have to send that to DITRH now that I, now that I think about it. Uh, not sure if this ties into anything flat earth, but it does seem weird. For some reason, when I see weird stuff, it makes me think of you. <laughs> in parentheses joking greg best yeah no that's a good one i mean i did not know that article existed and that's another one in my to-do pile hopefully this will not be a trend or i'm gonna have a lot of homework after we're done this is called jim carrey jim carrey talks about the dome this was sent to me by dave tanner what is the dome you could actually look that up on youtube i will not click on it right this second but it literally is called jim carrey talks about the dome so thank you for that dave this one's called hi mark Mark, I am Mark Sargent. You are Mark Sargent. We are Mark Sargent. Thank you, Mark Sargent. <laughs> and that's sent from local remate? Ramet. Cool. Fantastic. Thank you for that. This one's called you. Oh, fun, fun, fun. Troll, <laughs> troll email. I should have a troll alert, troll alert. We have a troll email. Ready? Here we go. This literally is titled, You are a despicable idiot. And the first line is, you are a despicable idiot. Religious evidence. You are basing your beliefs on a text. Do you know the text was translated? Can you read Sanskrit? Do you know four people who can keep a secret? You are talking like hundreds of millions of people keeping a secret, apparently because they are all being made millionaires by their participation. Why is your faith so weak that you need to oversimplify the potential powers of your God, he spells God, G-A-W-D, that he or she could only conceive of something you understand. That is pretty in insignificant God. Uh, the discussion about the vacuum of space is ridiculous as Challenger never got anywhere near, <laughs> near a vacuum. What? <laughs> Did this, that really require explanation? That, the, um, by the way, I'm reading it as is, the grammar is awful. The part of motion that you feel in a car moving at 10 miles per hour is the acceleration and or the objects moving past you as you propel forward. Low Earth orbit, if you would spend 10 seconds to look it up, refers to the outer limits of the atmosphere where there is atmosphere. This was used to build speed to slingshot to the orbit of the moon. I love that ignorance is somehow a method of debunking. Why are some NASA videos faked? Because there is no way to take the videos. <laughs> oh 
Wow. Wow. So, so you're admitting that NASA would fake some videos, but not all of them. Brilliant. From the time I was a kid, uh, actually watching the space missions, I remember seeing disclaimers right on the screen suggesting things were dramatizations. WTF is this nuts Kennedy crap. I've seen some of this conspiracy idiocy as well where people are claiming that a car in a museum proves that the limo was different. What kind of ignorant lunatics are you? Are you diagnosed with paranoia? <laughs> so apparently this man believes in no conspiracies, including JFK. Uh, Mysterious Stranger was not unpublished. Uh, absolutely it was unpublished. Uh, otherwise, how did you get your hands on it? Because it was... Okay. It wasn't a formal published work, but everybody knows about it. It's, I've read it. Let's lay this out on the table. How much are you making from your idiotic endeavor endeavors in conspiracy theory advocacy isn't profit a motivation you push on nasa let's see is that inconsistent learn to take one side of an argument to prove your point with facts used in one way do you believe in ufos yes i do it would see would seem to both play with and totally against flatter theories not at all explain to me about optics if you have an optical device that magnifies a planet and you know how the optics work can't you determine that your whacked theories about planets not being real is exceptionally stupid unless telescope companies are also part of the conspiracy as are the camera manufacturers and <laughs> likely a lot of photographers and optic scientists but this is despicable want to debate contact me and he does not sign his name or give me a number awesome and his, his his email he goes by yeah richard lynch and his but his email isn't richard lynch it says photoshop.layers at gmail.com so whoever you are a hey, nice try but you are off on so many points uh, i'm not even gonna try to address them all but it did, i i read it because it's probably the longest troll email i've gotten in or received in three years thank you for that Made my morning. This one's called Meetup Jacksonville, Florida. Greetings, Mark. First, I'd like to thank you again for the awesome promo. We already had 12 people that have joined the group, not counting you. Second, this guy in Langka, Malaysia, has contacted me about an international FE conference he is planning for the last quarter of 2018. I think this is someone you would like to chat with. He is building a Flat Earth Cafe on top of the highest 3,000-foot mountain in Langkau, Langkawi. L-A-N-G-K-A-W-I. He said you can see a 360 view of the horizon. Everything for sale in the cafe will be about Flat Earth. He's also writing a book. Anyway, I'm sending him your email. I'm not sure why he doesn't have it, but he asked me for it. He first contacted me on the Meetup app, and then we have talked on Skype a few times. His name is Kamar Kazar. He goes by Cam. And here's his email. It's a UK email. Thank you for everything you do. Peace, Karen. Thank you, Karen. And I did talk to him. And hopefully he's putting something together. We're only in February of 2018, but hopefully he'll get something. Yeah, I'll absolutely attend in Malaysia. Did he say Malaysia? Yeah. Every time I hear Malaysia, I keep thinking of Micronesia from Zoolander. This one's called, check this out. NASA pulls first black crew member from ISS mission. Uh, AOL.com article, NASA pulls first black crew member from ISS mission. First black, there's never been a, a black crew member up on the ISS. Really? I didn't, I did not know this. I, I had thought because we've had black shuttle people. In fact, I, you know what I, you know why, you know why it keeps throwing me? The, the Challenger disaster, but one of the pilots was black. So, wow, that's true. That's amazing. Really way to not go on the diversity track there, NASA. Pfft, whatever. All right, this one's called Thank You. Hello, Mark. To be honest, I'm not entirely certain at this point in time if this is still your current email address. Yes, it is. It's the only email I've ever had since I, I got to Colorado, not counting the two years I worked at AOL as a forum consultant. I had an AOL address. That was back when you had to pay a lot of money for email. 
However, after watching your videos, I feel inclined enough to take the chance. The concept of Flat Earth is something I've been aware of, but never truly delved into until I came across your videos. This was three days ago now, and the time since I've viewed and listened to about five of your Strange World episodes so far, and I am deeply intrigued. My intentions with writing you were at the very least to express a sincere thank you for doing what you do in the way that you do it. I've always been an advocate for truth seeking and ever since I was old enough to truly form my own opinions, I have exhausted a large amount of mental energy reading into conspiracy theories of all different natures. I'm incredibly intrigued by the topic of Flat Earth and I plan to continue my research into the subject. There is seemingly endless number of facets regarding the system of government, money, and our organized society troubles me deeply. In fact, my girlfriend and I are currently in the blueprint design process of creating our own mobile tiny home with the hopes of becoming as self-sufficient as possible. Another story for another time, I suppose, but one that may certainly help give illustration to who we are. Nevertheless, I am rambling and I do apologize for, again, I don't even actually know to whom I am sending this message. If, however, this is still your current email address and I'm speaking to Mark Sargent, I'd like to reiterate my sincerest thank you for taking the time to do what you do, I believe. Below, as is traditionally attached to my online signature, here's a link to my YouTube channel. I do not intend it to be as a self-plug of any kind, simply an insight into what I do from one artist to another. Never stop creating, in your case, never stop spreading the truth. Sincerely, Benjamin John McGrath, and his YouTube channel is, as I click on it, Benjamin John. 100 subscribers. You know what? I just subscribed. Benjamin John. Cool. That's great. He looks like he's into music quite a bit. Right on. Thank you for that. Moving on. This one's called North Polar Star. Hi, Mark. I'm Willie from Romania. And I have a following question. Why can people from Cape Town, South Africa, not see the polar star on a flat earth? Uh, we have some friends over there. And since we started following your videos, my wife wrote to them asking if they can see the polar star. And now they replied, no. Thank you very much for your answer, Willie Schuster. At multiple display systems. Easy. That's, that's my easiest explanation. That's what I would do. If the planetarium, if the dome structure is large enough, you have multiple projection systems. One projects. And you can you have that overlap. Uh, at the equator zone, otherwise known as the inner circle. That's how you do it. It's kind of what we do in simulations now. It's it's all just software, and it's, it works pretty easily. But that's just me. Other people have different explanations. That's mine. I try to go for the easy one. Survival Guide. That's when this one's called. Survival Guide. Hello, Mark. My husband watches and listens to you all the time. Thank you for your research and info. Please send us your guide. Thank you. Philomena. And yep, anyone wants their survival guide, all you have to do is write me an email and say survival guide in the title. You don't even have to put anything in the text if you don't want. And I will send you my 100 page survival guide called Empty Shelves, which is what you should do in case of a long term power outage. And little spoiler, you don't have to leave your house. You, can, you don't have to run in the woods and try to catch rabbits and eat bugs and live in underneath branches. You can just stay at home and make do with what you got there's lots of things you can do especially in the united states it's a lot of resources around we got a lot of stuff moving on this one's called flat earth mark i used to be a very strong believer in the heliocentric model i am a physicist physics teacher at a community college in my area i have been starting to question everything and i have come to agree with the flat earth idea being that the line of sight with zoom cameras is more than enough to prove there is no curve thank you Excellent, but I want to bring up one more thing. If comets, as they approach the sun, start to form a ball of steam and vapor from the ice melting in various gases and so on and so forth, how is the Earth screaming through empty space? The same space as the comet, and as according to physicists, is in the sun's atmosphere. How does this planet not have a vapor trail? And how have we not lost our atmosphere billions of years ago? Excellent point. It's one of my five scientific points, which is how does the vacuum of space not tear this atmosphere off? The velocity alone is enough to blow the air off of Earth, never mind the vacuum of space sucking it all away. That's true, because the Earth's supposedly traveling 60,000 miles an hour sideways. When you say that we are inside the sun's atmosphere, we should all be living in a giant comet that is basically being boiled and vaporized minute by minute. Just saying. Thanks for all your videos. George. Thank you, George. Uh, excellent point. Very excellent point. Why are we not just a giant comment? 
Comet, yeah. Excellent point. Moving on. This one's called New Launch Method BS. Uh, and there's a wiki entry, and it's called Strato Launch Systems Corporation. It's a space transportation venture developing a new air launch to orbit system. It's located in Seattle, Washington. Go figure. It was officially announced. Oh, boy. Paul Allen, Microsoft co-founder. They haven't done anything, though. It was announced in 2011. They're not doing crap. But Joseph Moreno sent me that. Thank you, Joseph. Awesome. This one's called The Mandela Effect on the X-Files. Yep. Uh, season, the last, this season, this current season could be their last because I hear that uh, Karen Gillian, Gillian, whatever his name, Scully, uh, she, I don't, I hear she's not, this is it, after this season she's done. So without her, I don't think David Company's going to be doing it anymore. I mean, I suppose he could, he could bring on a different sidekick, but I, anyway. Uh, and that's from FXD. So, oh, I'm sorry, the, the episode, episode four, they talk about the Mandela effect in depth. The whole episode is about the Mandela effect. I, I'm just not a big fan of the X-Files this, this last season. I think they're, it's just kind of a shadow of what they used to be. Just me. I'm sorry, the remaking of, is, sorry, go off on a little tear here. How novelty is gone in media. They're just, they have run out of things to do. I mean, they're bringing back television shows, things they've never, ever, ever done before. You know, they're bringing back the X-Files, bringing back, already brought back Will and Grace, bringing back Roseanne bringing back uh what was that other one i heard they were gonna bring back oh murphy brown it was like really how old is murphy brown now i mean she was a you know she was a big actress in the 60s and 70s so it's because they, they've run out of ideas there's nothing new under the sun we have tapped out if you guys think uh i'm kidding look up look it up the the best year in movies i challenge anybody the best year in movies ever was 1999 Look it up. Movies of 1999. Compare that list to any other year. Yeah, 2000, 2001, 2002, we're, we're starting to slope downwards. But after 2003, it just kind of fell off a cliff. And, of course, the Marvel movies, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they made a lot of money. But you know, other than that, I've, in fact, here's the stat that threw me, which was in 2017. Little little side note for you real quick. In 2017 is such an interesting statistic. Half of the money made in Hollywood, half of it, was done by just 11 films. And they were all, you, you can imagine what they are. They were probably all superhero movies. The, the rest of the money was, was distributed amongst hundreds of films. So nobody's making money. Very, very few people are making money in Hollywood anymore. And they know this. They're dying. Okay, uh, this one's called Dumb and Dumber Discover the Flat Earth. Eat Your Heart Out Truman. Regards, Jeff. It's, it's a little meme where uh, what Jim Carrey's character says, I was expecting the Rocky Mountains to look a little more rocky. And I forget the actor's name in the other one. He goes, yeah, that Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's full of crap. It's good. Thank you for that. This one's called Houston, We Have Another Problem. And I'm not going to read this whole thing. But it, but it says, hey, guess what? I cannot believe I just discovered this. I'm not aware of anyone else in the world knowing about this at this point. This just proves all the videos, live feeds coming from ISS Space Station is a host. I'm only going to read the, the bold print. NASA's Cinderella freefall effect weightlessness in the ISS Space Station is impossible by own data. NASA lies again. Simulating weightlessness, how zero gravity flights work. And it goes into it. Basically says that, that they shouldn't have zero G, G in that orbit hmm when the plane reaches 30 degrees of descent the passengers experience microgravity it feels if you are weightless only because only negligible gravitational forces are present hmm maybe maybe there's a lot of math here i'm not i'm not going to read it but they're saying that that uh the, how is the iss explains it is uh is not doesn't work so look it up if you get a chance thank you for that this one's called Flat Earth Convention on ABC Nightline. Yep, you guys probably caught that because my oh-so-charming mug is now on the thumbnail when you type in Flat Earth without any filters. It's pushing towards the top of the list now because of ABC. They decided to use me as the thumbnail. Again, I hate being on camera. I hate it, hate it, hate it. Patricia, if we, although I will say this, it wasn't for Patricia putting me on camera. A lot of, most people wouldn't even know who I was if I was walking around in a Flat Earth Convention. Anyway. 
Uh, hi, Mark. I liked your video about the Flat Earth Convention. I noticed you were holding a flat disk representing the Flat Earth in that video. I think I've figured out the layout of the Flat Earth based on the North and South Pole. Right now, I am certain the Flat Earth AE map showing a circular sun is incorrect. The sun still travels above the Earth, but in a different pattern. If you are interested in this information, let me know. The information will get out. I just need to reach the right person or person to disseminate this information. I've reached out to Jaron of Jaronism and Dean Marble about this and want to be able to discuss and who this to someone who can get it out to the masses. I haven't heard from either one since I sent emails to them. Please respond because I think this is really important. Thank you, Ron K. Okay, here's the reason, Ron, why you haven't gotten emails back from them or me. And that is don't send emails with cliffhangers. Don't don't be sending emails that say, look, I found out something really, really important, but I'll tell you, you know, it's, it's, it's what the news people use today. You know, we've three household chemicals, which will kill you tomorrow. We'll tell you right after news, you know, weather and sports. No, no, no. no just, just tell me, it. give me the email, give me the info. If I think it's worth it, I'll give you a call and uh, give me my opinion on it. But don't just say, I will tell you something if you write me back. No, no, no. Don't, I will not respond to that in text or voicemail. It's sorry. It's too much of a cliffhanger. Hate them. You're adding drama to something that shouldn't be there. Not a huge drama fan, which is why I stopped watching the evil dead. For those of you who have followed my stuff. Why? Because the evil dead was initially done by a um, guy who did soap operas. And it just bugged me. It, again, it just bugged the crap. And I was going, why do I hate this show? I love zombie movies. I love zombie television show. You know, it's the first zombie television show. Why do I hate the show? It's because he was adding drama to situations that don't need drama. If it's the end of the world, if it's the apocalypse and there are zombies walking around, when you wake up, literally your level of stress is 9 out of 10. When you wake up in the morning, as soon as you, as soon as your eyes open, why the hell would you care about who's sleeping with who? And who's betraying who and all this other crap. All you're trying to do is stay alive. The other, it's just like, it's like, I don't care what you guys are doing. You can do whatever you want. It's like, all I care about is not dying from zombies. But he built it in and people love drama. It's like, oh, it's like drama on top of drama. Yeah. It's like, yeah, put, put some, take a really sweet piece of wedding cake and then put a whole bunch of ice cream and then chocolate syrup and then honey and then whipped cream and God only knows what else on top of it. You don't need it. The cake was just fine. Sorry, a little rant. Okay, let's read this one. This is a longer one. This one's called Thanks. Mark, my name is Leslie. I'm a teacher. I live in Tucson, Arizona. At one of my Bible studies in early September, our leader said he believed the earth was flat. I couldn't believe my ears and immediately quoted the scripture, the earth is a ball, Proverbs 8, 27, and hangs on nothing, Job 26, 7. I stated humans have circled the globe and referenced NASA pictures on the globe. He said, Proverbs quotes a circle, not a ball. I looked frantically that night to disprove him, but couldn't. I passed the whole incident off as silly and went on with life. His wife, who is his co-leader and a teacher like I am, shares a late September birthday with me. I respect her a lot and we went out to eat a meal to celebrate our birthdays. She also brought up the flat earth and since I admire her so much, I promised her I would investigate. I'm known in that Bible study of thoroughly refuting things mentioned in our study and I don't that I don't believe, and I was prepared to do just that with this stupid flat earth idea. It only took a full day of watching flat earth video material before I was shaken to the core of my program beliefs. I couldn't find enough material to look at in the next few days. I've come home from school and spent hours into the night watching video after video. Within four days, I'd seen so much that proved the earth was flat, wander, water finding its level, the curvature not showing when things could be seen at great distances, uh, the path of southern air flights going north before going back south, the way airplanes fly level after reaching a certain altitude, and the fake NASA footage that I could no longer cling to the globe. My first reaction was not unlike the way I felt when I came to the Lord at 29 years old, anger at people saying we evolved from nothing into humans. Now I felt anger at being lied to about the very shape of the earth, but with your clues, Rob Skiba's great biblical references, and Eric DeBay's 200 proofs, I became a flat earther. In my excitement, I immediately shared this information with my sister, a strong Christian. He, she reacted so ballistically, I felt a total betrayal. Presently, I'm in a regrouping mode. Now I want to be more careful when I confess that I'm a flat earther and be ready 
as scripture says, to give a reason for the belief I have. So I'm gathering a list of videos and questions to suggest to people with whom I will be sharing. One thing that has hit me so much as an educator is the propaganda in the textbooks. I, of course, have seen it with the millions of years of uh, and evolution malarkey. Uh, you don't see that in an email very often, malarkey. I've seen in text and spoon-fed to children for decades. I've carefully sidestepped around it with my students as much as possible. Now, wow, I can't believe how much ball, earth, planets, trip to the moon, etc. Articles flood the text as well from second grade to eighth, and I'm sure past that, but eighth's the highest grade I teach. I heard in one of your recent broadcasts something about business cards. Google Flat Earth that will leave in your wake as you travel around. Is there a site I can go in order to buy several hundred of these or will I have to create my own? I think that would be a great tool. Please let me know. God bless you for your work. I wish I'd known years before now, before I myself unwittingly added to the propaganda of a globular earth. Is it globular or globular? Globular, I think. To hundreds of innocent students about this deceptive lie. Well, never again. I will never reinforce the globe model to students again. I will have to plot my course carefully on how and what I do share, but I can avoid directly teaching the false view of a ball earth. Thanks for the enlightenment, Leslie Dodge. And yeah, as far as those cards go, Google Flat Earth or Google Flat Earth Clues, you can just email uh, David Weiss at DITRH, the, the YouTube channel, otherwise known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. And if you don't know how to reach him, I mean, you should be able to reach it straight from his YouTube page. But if you can't, you can shoot me an email and I'll forward it off to him. Like I did that email when I first read it. This one's called Flat Earth. Hey, Mark, I know I haven't went up in space to look down to see what I come up with but how do you explain seeing the sun being round and the full moon when you see it it's round <laughs> help me out thanks rob and yeah rob and he's, he's he's it's gonna take rob a little while because first of all he's using the wrong word round can also mean two-dimensional a dinner plate is round a dining room table is round a hubcap is round what the word he's looking for is sphere or ball or globe one of the three sphere ball globe and as far as, you know, just because he said he thinks the sun is a sphere, does it actually mean it's a sphere? You're told, he doesn't know it's a sphere. He's told it's a sphere. That's, that's the big difference. If I, again, go, I use the planetarium argument. I go into a planetarium. I see the moon up in, on the ceiling. The moon looks like a sphere, but I know it's not a sphere. I know it's just a 2D projection because I'm in a domed structure. But when you go outside, when you look up, it says, oh no, that moon is three-dimensional. Really, why? Well, because NASA told us. S science told us? Well, because NASA landed on it, right? Right? United States military, Department of Defense. Don't believe everything you're told. This one's called Crazy Flat Earth Music from the Depths of IPS Blue Wrench Lodge. There's a link to it, kind of trippy. Also, yeah, the new phone system totally screwed me up. I kept thinking I was on a listener line. <laughs> Anywho, I will call in next week and tell you the story. Maybe. That's from Joseph Lynch. Oh, oh, yeah, he's he's got the It's Flat uh, license plate in Iowa. P.S. I'm a goof. Yeah, yeah, you are. Uh, you, it, but uh, that reminds me, anybody who has a Flat Earth license plate, who hasn't sent it to me for the compilation of the slideshows or anything else, if you've got it, it's flat license plate, send it to me. I know there's a few more out there that I talked to. It just killed me. I was at the convention and people are showing me on their phones. Look at my flat earth license plate. I go, I don't have that one. Why? How have you not sent it to me? I don't know if they're shy, if they just never got around to it. They just don't want, to, want me to put it out there. I, I don't know. It's like, look, it's a cool license plate. You know, show your, show your colors. Be proud. Come out of the closet. I'm talking about flat earth. All right, moving on. This one's called Flat Earth is Everywhere. Hi, Mark. Flat Earth is Everywhere. Most of my friends are Flat Earthers now. Feels great. Found two references to Flat Earth today. Very funny to hear about Flat Earth in non-Flat Earth videos. Uh, let's see. 34 seconds. The old men talk about Flat Earth. Okay. And that's on a video called... Called... It's the Common Sense Conservative getting some hate at Portland State University for asking people what they think about Donald Trump. Somebody brought up Flat Earth in that. That's interesting. Another one, uh, Tucker Carlson debates global warming activist T 
talk, Tucker mentions the flat earth and the activist, activist response is so predictable. When people use flat earth in everyday talk, even if it's in a bad way, it's a good sign for the mon monkey effect. Pretty sure it's for the end of 2018. Yeah, I agree. It's just speeding up and speeding up. But Geno Smith, backup quarterback for the Jets, came out just yesterday, talked about it, tweeted it. He's going to catch a lot of hell for it, but great. Good for him. Uh, P.S. There is no way NASA survived the exposure of the Apollo 11 footage on TV in 2019 for the 50. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 50 year anniversary. Yeah. So the Apollo moon missions 50 year anniversary is next year. Nobody's been talking about it yet. Not talking about it. They should be going. Should be going back. Anyway, this year, Flat Earthers should be loud and present at all festivals event Earth Day on April 22nd and the 20th of July. Sorry for my poor English. Regards, the French-Canadian guy. No, it's not so bad. I've heard worse. Moving on. Hello, my name is Mac. M-A-C-C. -C. Mark, hello, my name is Mac. Your theory of the Earth being flat is incredible, but what if I were to tell you... Oh boy, here we go that I have more possible facts that you might find out very interesting. I have never shared them with anyone. It's, this is this is how it... Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll finish this. It's not very long. With anyone because I've been criticized on what I know and how fast I obtained this knowledge, which I gained over three weeks. It's an amazing experience and everything I theorize about the hypothesis has come to reality and extremely accurate. I mean, sounds crazy, right? But I am willing to share this with you. But it's hard to explain over mail or telephone because I don't trust anyone with this. But since you're a strong believer in the flat planet theory, you might be able to understand. Just think about this. Uh, it might be the answers to some questions you've been seeking. I'm not a supercomputer based genius, LOL, but I know all of this and have not once looked into astrology, mythology, numerology, or any sort of ancient myths, but I have always been smart and never thought I'd come up with this theory. So if you're interested, please contact me. Thank you, Mac Prado. And again, don't give me cliffhangers. I mean, the guy could have written an infomercial right there. It's like, we, we've got something great. You know, what's the latest thing? Um, you know, how to make, how to make money overnight on Bitcoin. You know, we'll, we'll tell you, all you have to do is contact us now and send money. Of course, he's not asking for money, but still just tell me what it is. Don't tell me this. Don't give me this. This teaser, it kills me. It, I, I'm sorry, I get too many of these. Probably one out of 20 emails I get. In this case, that's about right. Getting, what, two already? This one's called Force the Line Funding. Dude, you and I need to talk. Uh, is this the guy? Oh, this is the guy that's doing the... I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. I, I shouldn't have kept that email. That was the, the guy that was doing the New York Brooklyn... Uh, meetup, which is happening tonight, by the way. If you're in Brooklyn or if you're in New York and listening to this right now, there is a, all you have to do is type in Flat Earth Meetup Brooklyn and you'll see the trailer for it. It is happening this evening, this afternoon. In fact, hopefully I'll get this thing up here pretty quick. A few hours from when this thing goes up. So it's called Flat Earth. Hello, Mark. My name is Robert. I am very interested to talk with you directly about the Flat Earth Theory. I've been watching a great many videos about the subject recently, as I am sure you can understand. It has not been an easy sell. I've heard many different arguments. In fact, supporting the Flat Earth Theory has become apparent that there are some very real points that cannot be explained other than by accepting the theory that the Earth is flat. Naturally, when I began to accept the idea, I quickly began questioning what and who created this terrarium we have seemed to be living in. What is outside of the glass dome? What is below it? Why are we being lied to? The list goes on and on. I would very much like to arrange a time when we can talk on the phone if you are open to it. I look forward to your reply. Sincerely, Robert H. And I don't mind that I get emails like that. I don't, but I have, I'm doing way too many things to actually answer all of them. So in that case, he'll he'll find his answers. They're they're all out there. There's a wall of content on flat Earth. This one's called "Greetings from Our Strange World," and there's a lot of points here. Eh, I might as well read it. Heck with it. All right. What a journey you inspired me to take, and I can't seem to put the brakes on. Anyway, something recently occurred to me that maybe you might want to explore or explain to me. You have an answer, and if not possible, you might add to the evidences for demonstrating space travel 
isn't even possible, even if breaking out of Earth's atmosphere was. Why? Well, Newton's third law, I believe it's third, is every action has a reaction, and this is how the so-called brains explain how rockets travel through space with thrust. The answer is always Newton. In researching this, th though, one thing I couldn't find was an accept explanation of what prevents rockets traveling with thrust or while coasting which we are told they also do from falling or dropping in the same direction outer space isn't made up of the consistency of a syrupy thick viscosity of a rocket that a rocket spaceship would maintain a still or static position in while traveling with or without power no it's a vacuum we are told and without air try coasting anything without wings even in the space of earth's atmosphere with air and it would drop like a rock just as the iss drops we are told but around the earth in space anything would equally drop endlessly and forever i would imagine there's no special magical force to hold such spaceship in a static level position it's going to drop or rise in one direction or another being pulled by gravity, if gravity existed, towards somewhere. Space is space, whether it's within Earth's atmosphere or outside of it. It's still just empty space. When I ponder the LEMs or command modules of the Apollo missions, disconnecting and reconnecting in a fixed static position while en route to the moon at, what, thousands of miles per hour, it's not madness, it's insanity to believe that this really happened. I'm getting a little off track for a moment, but ponder this about Apollo missions, if you will. The Apollo Saturn V blasts off from Earth with its three stages using 900,000 gallons of explosive fuel of liquid hydrogen, oxygen, and kerosene. All stages worked flawlessly. The three stages put Apollo 11 into and out of Earth's supposed, or supposed orbit and on the way to the moon. While on the way to the moon, the command module separated from the Saturn V third stage performing an acrobatic 180 and connected back to the third stage and attached to the LEM thus extracting it out of the stage 3 Saturn 5 and then performed another 180 with the attached LEM disengaged and headed off to the moon using the CM's engine once applying the brakes and parking in the moon's orbit about three days later, Armstrong and somebody left the command module, crawled into the LEM, I'll just say LEM, disengages the LEM from the command module, fired its LEM engine and descended to the moon and supposedly with barely enough fuel to make it down. The LEM landed perfectly on the moon while kicking up a little dust, haha, and a little left of the track. Explored the moon. Future missions, as you know, even took ATVs with them. Oh man, I can't can't help laughing. Then they light another fuse and blast off from the moon with their explosive 10,000 pounds of thrust LEM engine. Okay, sorry, I'm supposed to say LEM. Guess they refueled it at a service station while on the moon and make it back to the orbit and find it reconnected to this to the command module and all with all the computing power of a 1985 cash register. The astronauts depart the LEM and rejoin Collins, who didn't remember if he could see stars in the moon, out the window of the CM. I'll just say CM now. You know, somehow you would think they would have to come up with a more appropriate name for windows on a spaceship. Houses have windows, ships have portholes. Heck, forget all the research, just calling windows on a spaceship windows is a dead giveaway. The entire scheme was a fraud. They separate from the LEM, then the CM lights its engine fuse, once again blasting the three men back towards Earth. As they get close to Earth, they step on the brakes to slow them down, and once they were slow and stable enough, the CM capsule, capsule separated from the CM rocket and closest space closet and closet space, closest space in it, somehow rotated the capsule heat shield down and at the perfect angle towards the globe, and after not burning up the atmosphere, floated safely down to the ocean by three flawlessly not frozen or burned up fully open parachutes at a comfortable 20 miles an hour. Multiply the above scenario times six, because they went six times. My guess is the odds of pulling the above mission off flawlessly six times in a row in under three years is astronomical. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And with technology of the 40s to the 60s. Think of what they had to operate flawlessly during those six missions. 78 monster rocket engines with maybe millions of parts, pumps, thousands of miles of wiring, thousands upon thousands of components of all kinds fuses all working perfectly and the igniting and burning of over five million five hundred thousand gallons oh yeah five and a half million gallons of liquid explosive fuel 
all the maneuvering, all the lining up and extractions, reconnections, the locks working on the CM, the LEM, and the third stage, the untested spacesuits, 18 gigantic parachutes, the heat shields, having through having enough oxygen, food and water, maybe 150 diapers. Man, wasn't anyone awake back then? Mark, maybe you know someone who can work the odds. Any guess? 100,000 to 1 if it all goes off without a hitch. You know, if space actually existed. I was eight years old watching Apollo 11 on live on television. I remember what went through my mind. What went through my mind was why was the TV picture of Armstrong so crappy and distorted? I've never seen such a messed up picture of the TV before. It never sat right with me. I heard an interview once where the interviewee said how it would be harder to fake them, fake it then to go. Oh man, unreal. Okay, back on track. Maybe I'm wrong, but space is space, whether it's outside or of Earth's atmosphere, it's still space. Other than hot air or helium hydrogen air balloons, anything with mass doesn't float in space. It can be propelled forward with a thrust, but will fall. Keep in mind this problem <clears throat> would be needed to be solved or explained uh, if going to outer space were possible. But again, after looking at it, I'm more confident that outer space itself continues to be nothing but a fantasy of fiction that was established in writers' imaginations decades before space programs even existed. I hope I conveyed my thoughts on this at least somewhat respectively. Thank you for opening my eyes in Flat Earth. Sincerely, Scott. Yeah, great email, Scott. And you're right. Uh, it's something you, you were talking about, all the stuff, all the different things that... Look, if you go to the moon once and make it back and nobody dies, you should be so thrilled and, and and thank God that you made it back in one piece. And these guys didn't even stop. It's like, oh yeah, let's literally go six times in three years. Flawlessly. Nobody had a problem with the exception of Apollo 13 and even they didn't die. So, and then they never go again. You know, it was like a boom, 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 boom. Oh, it's boring. We don't have to go there. No one has to go in anymore. Good night, everybody. Shut the thing down. And that's it. They shut it all down and they never went back. And now, I mean, after the spatial shuttle program has been shut down for years, most Americans don't know that. I think they're ditching the whole thing off as on SpaceX. SpaceX is going to be the fall guy now for this. And I think Trump just announced, what, two days ago, they're going to get rid of the ISS. What's left? You're giving them $20 billion a year for what <laughs> exactly? If you don't have an ISS and you don't have space shuttles, what's the $20 billion for? Where, where's that money going? Is it going? Are you doing literally anything with that money? at all besides building some underground bases sorry moving on uh this one's called comment on inside flat earth international conference where everyone believes earth isn't round that's the abc news one oh it's a troll email good uh this one's from billy bob smith if this truly is you mr sergeant i feel sorry for you and all your followers i suggest heavy therapy sessions for the rest of your life too bad nasa doesn't shuttle flights any long see right there uh, you could have taken a trip up there, spent a few weeks in the ISS, and come back with your sanity restored. And, and Until that can happen, you're just a fool with a microphone. Thank you, Billy Bob Smith. That's wonderful. I don't mind the troll emails. I don't. Not anymore. Flat Earth questions. Mark, so I've never looked into the Flat Earth suggestions. I've dismissed them as bogus for the most part, but I do have a couple questions that may pique my interest into looking into it further so what would be the point of the flat earth cover-up what's on the other side of the flat earth does a flat earth levitate in nothingness and would the sun suddenly appear over flat earth instead of gradually appearing thanks jerry jerry watch the flat earth clues again please most of those are covered in that in fact, all these questions are covered all you have to do is type in flat earth into youtube and or or look, my favorite is of course go through the um <clears throat> flat earth short list for new people which is on a playlist. Just type it into Google. Flatter short list for new people. It's only like 25 videos. Ah, lemonade. Trying to get over from... Where was I drinking last night? Junior Mints. Have you ever made a Junior Mint? <clears throat> it's pretty good. Take peppermint schnapps and Kahlua. And you, and you mix it together and pour it over crushed ice. Super sweet. And uh, it's good stuff. Yep, that's my drink for last night. Uh, this one's also comment on inside the Flat Earth International Conference, the ABC News one. This was from Thomas. Yes, I first learned that the world was somewhat spherical when I was a young kid. That has remained with me all the way until now when I was working in the Earth orbiting satellite industry. Hmm. 
It's good. This one's called Astronaut Figuring Face Down. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened to my email? Astronaut Figuring Face Down on the Desk. Trump Space Policy Directive. This was written back on January 26th. At the 320 mark is the signing of the directive, which starts the nonverbal messaging by President Trump. At the four minute mark, President Trump puts the astronaut figuring face down on the desk. Very obvious messaging for the astronaut attendees and the television audience. Hmm. Kurt Moore. Thank you for that. And, and you could look up that YouTube video. It's called Tr Trump Space Policy Directive. This one's called Flat Earth Question. Mr. Sergeant, hello, my name is Daniel Wita. Wita. I am an aviation ordnance man, senior chief with 18 years of service in the Navy, currently stationed as a recruit division commander at Recruit Training Command in Great Lakes, Illinois. I have been going down this rabbit hole a lot lately and I've watched a lot of your videos and have gotten kind of addicted to it. So much of this stuff makes sense to me and I have completely become a believer. Like everyone else, I scoffed at the idea at first until I started really looking into it. The thing that really got me going on flat earth was the curvature of the earth formula. Curvature is eight inches per mile squared. I went so far as to test it out myself in my hometown in Duluth, Minnesota. Duluth! I know that one. <laughs> You're up there uh, near the Iron Range. Yeah, up there in the north. Uh, when I was on leave, there is a perfect spot across Lake Superior from Minnesota to, to Wisconsin that is about 10 miles. At that range, the curvature drop is 67 feet. From sea level on the beach, I should not be able to see anything shorter than a six-story building across the lake, but clear as day I can. Lots of people are giving me crap about looking into this stuff and pretty much calling me crazy and laughing at me. I don't really care because I'm taking the time to actually research this stuff for myself and not just take taking what people tell me as if it were truth. It makes me sad that I live in a world filled with liars. It truly is easier to fool someone than convince them that they have been fooled. That's a Mark Twain quote, by the way. It's good. One of the things that was difficult for me to understand about Flat Earth at first was the moon and sun, but I think the book Flat Earth Advanced, The Moon, Function, and Cataclysm by Mark Knight does a really good job explaining this. One thing I'm having trouble explaining and maybe you can help me out with is the whole airline flight thing. Here we go. Fla Qantas does flights from Cinti Sydney to Santiago, Chile. The flight time is around 12 hours. This would be impossible on flat earth. Do you know it's just a fake flight? Blah, blah, blah. Um, I would like your take on this. Uh, and that's from um, Daniel. Yeah, again, that's why I make Clue 9, which is it doesn't matter if the flight's real or not. You can't prove the route. That's the big thing. That's what Clue 9 was, was all about. And that is the, the GPS system drops it off. Remember, the GPS system, DOD, United States, supposedly 32 blanket coverage overlapping satellites. And yet when the planes leave land radar range, the latitude and longitude blink off and go in approximated or estimated mode. And they don't tell you where you are. And oh, now they'll tell the pilots. They'll still leave that graphic on the screen because the pilots would never fly over an ocean if they had no idea where they were. But that's all they're using. So, yeah, it doesn't doesn't matter if you think the flights are real or not. The route cannot be proven. Challenge anyone to try to find it. This one's called Physics Project. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. My name is Connor Smith. I copied my friend, partner on this project. Alec Wires, we are students in the 11th grade at the University of Chicago Laboratory Schools. Mm, cool. We are taking a physics course right now, and we have a project coming up where we're trying to prove the flat Earth model is correct by using physics. So far, we have determined that the Earth's center of gravity, if it were flat like a disk, your position on the Earth would be affected by gravity depending on your distance from the center. We need help to find convincing evidence that this is not true. We are wondering if you had any information on how gravity would affect you and the surface of the Earth. If you were standing further away from the center of gravity, we were also wondering if you had any other information on this topic, if you could help point me in the right direction or how to go about proving the flat earth phenomena. Thank you, Connor Smith and Alec. And yeah, I wrote to these guys. If I get anything from a, a college or a, a school, in this guy, in this case, they're, they're juniors in high school, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll write them back immediately. And I told them, look, your your initial assumption was wrong. And that is, you're, you're going to the, from this from a globe, which is, yeah, a globe says that all gravity points inwards towards the center of the globe. But on a flat Earth, gravity just 
if again, if you fall in the gravity route, it just pulls straight down. So you know, it doesn't pull towards the center, nor does it even have to spin. That's what a common misconception is that you know gravity is in the center, like the North Pole, and the whole thing is turning again like a roulette table. Not the case. All right, uh, Connor Smith. Let's get rid of that physics project. Gone. Uh, this is another comment on the ABC News thing. It's from DK1. It's he says pretty silly to presume that. Many haven't done their own research. Everything about the Flat Earth is laughable at best. There was a lot of comments on the ABC thing uh, on, on ABC.com. I think I actually registered on ABC.com, their site. And there was, it's, it's still a pretty big story out there, which is fun. And ABC News, what they did was they waited. They were bumped because of other stories, but they waited. And then finally, when they released the their footage, because they were there for two days, on the on the conference down in Raleigh, um, the Flat Earth International Conference in Raleigh, they uh, they finally released it just a month ago, and it did pretty well. It was it was not a slam piece. It wasn't a hit piece on us. This one's called Hidden Facts, Mark. Hidden facts and truths and holy scriptures. Look what this book contains. What's the book? It's fourteen year old hundred year old book, and it knows us all and has recorded us all by name which can be decoded systematically in this book the funny thing is not a single muslim wants to know because the religious people are all employees doing an underpaid job with no real knowledge of the creator any other entities that profess god who would look for yourself this book has only just come to life as a miracle after its layout and formatting was updated uh, to a script format to save space hmm i don't know if this has anything to do with flat earth but Okay, this one's called Amateur Discovers Long Dead NASA Satellite Has Come Back to Life. Oh yeah, this is a good one. This is from uh, Randall Ames. <laughs> the article is literally called uh, behind, it was BehindTheBlack.com uh, Discovers Long Dead NASA Satellite Has Come Back to Life. Hey Mark, here's the kicker. Back from the dead in his hunt to locate Zuma, an amateur astronomer has discovered that a long dead NASA satellite designed to study the magnetosphere has come back to life. Whatever. Whatever. It kills me. It's kind of like the Mars rover. Mars rover battery, If even if you believe it was there, supposedly died years ago. Mars rover's still going. No one's going to explain to me how the battery technology just keeps going. Oh yeah, solar panels keep charging us. No, no. When a battery dies, it dies. Anyone that has owned a car knows this, and that is cars, car batteries only have, what, a six-year shelf life? And that's it. Then they won't take a charge anymore. They are dead. Dead, 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 dead. Dead. And you have to replace them. And the, the Mars rover runs off a battery, and I don't care if it's got a solar charger or not. It doesn't make any difference. A car charger is way more powerful than a solar charger, and the, they just won't explain it. So, oh, nope, we can keep turning the rover around. It's like, in fact, it was even down for like a year. It's like, nope, it's back up and running. Whatever. People believe so much. Uh, this one's called More X-Files Fake Moon Landing. Mark, if I might find this intriguing, I just got done watching the torrent of the new X-Files episode that has fake moon landing opening. And that episode is another reference where it shows the smoking man's son, Jeffrey, as a child watching the moon landings on TV live. It's an interesting quick scene showing how the powerful will lie to children for their own selfish reasons. They even use the term fake news early in that episode, Bill. Nice. Bill helps me uh, rip stuff from news media. Uh, we got time for a couple more. This one's called YouTube. Mark, excellent videos. Tonight I noticed that Eric DeBay's YouTube channel has been deleted. Yep, that was back on January 26th. Just wondering if you know anything about this. Yes, I do. I'm asking you because to me, you are the one of the ones at the very top of this current surge in a forever way of thinking. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, Eric was in, Eric's channel was blown away. He had 100,000 plus subscribers. Was blown away for hate speech. Plain and simple. I, I knew it. I called it. Warned him. Warned him and warned him and finally, you know, washed my hands of him after we were getting ready for the conference last year. The, the big thing was he would make like, I don't know, 20 flat earth videos and then he'd make a video which basically said Hitler was really, really great and all Jewish people should die. 
And then he'd make a whole bunch of more Flat Earth videos. And yep, there's another Hitler video and Jewish people must die. They rinse and repeat. He just did this over and over. And the big one, which got a lot of hits, was a video. He, he it, was, it was a reprint, which he titled, I think, itself. It was called Adolf Hitler versus the Jew World Order. I knew he was going to get smacked for it. If, if everybody should have. Anyone that didn't know this was, was in complete denial. And his, his channel was gone. I mean, like, no coming back. And so now he's had to build it up from scratch. I don't know if he's in up to 20,000 subs yet. So now he's got a uphill climb to, to get out of whatever he is. And so that's why. Let's see if we can find something happy to end on, though, shall we? Let's do... What's this one? Peaked interest. Mark, okay. So are you going with this are you saying that as a human species and everything else that on earth is an experiment some kind of elaborate science experiment if this were true what do we do about it how would i prove it to myself and others then if you could prove it what good would it do i have actually considered some of these things although i have never taken it as far as you have in your videos that's from corbin uh corbin's got a long way to go let him he's probably already done it remember i'm reading stuff that's at least a month old uh, let's try this one. Drowning in space. Dear Mark, I'm a subscriber from Slovenia. Recently, I have been, thanks to you, very focused on the predictive programming in movies about space. Remember when some time ago, one astronaut almost drowned from a supposed leak in a spacesuit, and many people thought it was weird, but it was because it was a freaking NASA pool. If you maybe missed this, please check the clip from the movie Life, how they push this crap to be legit through this clip anyway god bless you for your work stay safe and keep it up uh, truth is coming soon best regards edi thank you for that can we do one more uh, yeah, let me see if there's like one more throne of god article uh, you know what let's just call this one <laughs> there's so many emails and thank you guys for everyone in fact i've gotten three more emails since i've been reading the emails the uh, uh, thank you for everyone that wrote in. Remember, you can email your questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M S A R G E N T 23 at comcast.net. I will answer what I can. Uh, you can also call and leave a voicemail at either 303 494 6631 or 720 897 All my contact info, and including my physical mailing address, is literally in the description of every single video I made. It's one of the defaults. So that's it. If you guys remember, quick reminder, the Brooklyn meetup is tonight, the 25th Flat Earth meetup. Anyway, till then, till next time, guys, um, stay flat.